Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my hundredth mint commercial. No, 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 don't, no, don't, no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I only have to do like four of these. I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim blaming here. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash save whenever you're ready. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. You're listening to the new Mutual Audio Network. Welcome home. The following audio drama is rated R and is recommended restricted for anyone under the age of 17. Can you see Crow? I moved the tortoise towards Earth, but something is in our path. He's still drawing energy from the heart of the tortoise. Hold tight. We're hitting the passenger list from PRX's Radiotopia. Now? Right here and now. On the Sonic Society. Oh, hi. Hello. Um, we've got a, a, a child here, gate 27. He seems lost. A what? Uh, a child, a boy of about, um, how old are you? I'd say, I'd say, um, five. He, he was found wandering through the terminal with a carton of juice and a backpack. Does he have a passport? Uh, no. Have you put out a call for his parents? Yep, uh, several. Okay, what's his name? Excuse me? Excuse me, hi. What's your name? What's your name? Bratza. Bratza. Where, where's your, where's your mummy and daddy? Mama? Papa? Bratza. Hmm. Is that his surname? Is, is that, is that your last name? Is that your last name? Bratza? <laughs> I don't think he speaks much English. Where are you? Uh, gate 27. Okay, bring him to security. I'll see you there. Okay. Goodbye. So this is Heathrow Airport Passenger Welfare Officer Evelyn Davis. Today's date is April 12th, 2018. It's currently 8.36pm. This is Bratva. Do you want something to drink, Bratva? She needs to that be any. What did he say? He won't his mother. What's your mum's name, Bratva? Kaska sa maiket. Kade sa maiket ibusheti. Maike mama, datko, daddy. Where did you come from, Bratva? Do you know? So samoletul do de. He says he came on a plane. Do you know where you live? Hi, um, I checked the incoming passenger list for Bratfer. Only one here, so we're in luck. It looks like he flew in from New York today with his mother, Maria Elian. Is that your mum's name, Bratfer? Maria? Vaya muta la mique de li. Maike tu Maria les casa. I think that was a nod. Let's get the page out for Maria. Yeah, well, see, that's the thing. They were booked on a flight to Sofia, Bulgaria. Even better, so we can get Bratva over to... No, no, hold, hold on. Their flight already left, and Maria wasn't on it. So she's still in the airport, then? No. She's on a flight back to New York, Atlantic Airlines, flight 702. She should be landing at JFK at 11pm New York time. OK, um, we need to... Um... Hello, um, can you connect me with security at Atlantic Airlines, JFK? Yes, I'll hold. JFK. Uh, yes. Bratva, don't worry, sweetie. We're going to find your mummy. Breaking news tonight. 
A plane has crashed. Atlantic Flight 702 from London Heathrow was expected in New York. Atlantic Flight 702. Atlantic Flight 702. Or its radar contact with the plane was lost. All people on board. But I think everyone here is bracing themselves for the worst. At this point, it really is still a mystery. The disappearance is due to mechanical problems, pilot error, or even terrorism. When the is yet to be determined. This is very rare for an airplane to disappear uh, is not normal. I, I think we have at this hour uh, every reason to expect that this is not going to be a good outcome. Tempers are fraying. Some relatives of missing passengers were forcefully removed from a news conference. Satellite images show the plane changing course dramatically. Altered course before descending rapidly to 20,000 feet. The aircraft made that turn toward the west. Lost position. 50 degree left. Lost in the middle. Hoping for news. Of the ocean. About loved ones. Yeah. By a suspected bird strike. A bird strike. The bird strike, bird strike bird. is the most likely reason. It's the plane moving to 33,000 feet. We know that the left wing engine struck a flock of geese the pilot reported we have to move on life is a fragile thing and uh, maybe this is a time for all of us to to pause and turn to those we love and hold them close because life well life is fragile Hi there, it's Robin. Did you know that Radiotopia has a reality dating podcast? It's called Hang Up. It's kind of like a queer cross between The Bachelor and Love is Blind. And seriously, it's a blast. Hang Up's tagline is No Rings Attached. It's a refreshing focus on dating and connection rather than marriage. Here's a little clip about their current season. Our star Timo is 41 years old and recently divorced. I haven't been on a single date in 18 months. But now, they're looking for someone special. And like, really hot sex. Really hot public sex. <laughs> so, we set them up with six callers to date exclusively over the phone. I feel like I could talk to you for hours. On Hang Up, you don't just get to eavesdrop on dates. There's also a series of eliminations. And in the end, there's a twist. Will the last caller standing choose the star back and go on an all-expenses-paid vacation together? Or choose a cash prize instead? The new season is out now, so stay on the line. Subscribe to Hang Up Today on your favorite podcast platform. trying to reach Greg Ford? Uh, that's me. Um, my name's Caitlin Lay. I messaged you on Facebook uh, about the flight. Right. Can you just hang on one second? Yeah. Thank you. Hey guys, I gotta step around for just a minute. You ring your last name? Sorry, I just have to find a, like, a quiet spot to talk. Hold on. So, yeah, uh, the woman with that kid. Yeah, you said you were on an incoming flight with her, right? You sat next to her and her son? What is this for? My brother, Connor, was on 702. Oh, God. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's not, um, it's... Thank you. I'm just trying to piece all this together, so if there's anything that you could tell me, um... Yeah, totally. Like I said in my post, I just happened to be sitting next to the woman with the kid on the flight into London, you know, before she got right back on board the other one. And, and um, yeah. Right. Um, but you said that she got a phone call. Yeah. I wouldn't have thought anything of it if it weren't for all the things going on in the situation. But I hope you're not calling because you're offended by all the speculation. No, not at all. I'm just... I'm actually, 
it's actually comforting to see that other people have questions. So sorry. Um, anyway, ba- back to this woman. Right. So it's not like we talked much during the flight. I just asked her about her son and, and if he'd started swimming yet. Uh, I'm a swim coach. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I was just trying to be polite and she didn't really speak much English. And as soon as we landed at Heathrow and everyone's turning their phones on and everything, she gets this phone call. And I remember she just froze. I mean. So she was scared. Could you hear what she was talking about? No. I mean, she was talking in, I don't know, whatever she was speaking in. Bulgarian? But definitely, yeah, she was scared. I'd Terrified, I'd say. And she took the kid in her arms and was just whispering in his ear. And all around us, people were unbuckling seatbelts and opening the bins and pulling down suitcases and all that. And she's just sitting there staring straight ahead with the kid in her arms. And her face was like ghost white. What happened when she got into the terminal? I don't know. I didn't follow her. But when I was in line for the immigration line... uh, it was this big, big line, and a lot of flights had come in all at the same time. And I noticed her standing there all alone. And I remember thinking, where's the kid? I mean, I wouldn't have even remembered it if it weren't for all this talk about, you know, I mean, not a conspiracy exactly, but something weird going on. But, yeah. Does that help at all? I think so. Yes, thank you. You don't believe this thing about the flock of geese? I don't know what I believe. Yeah, it must have been really hard for your family. Yeah. It still is. So, so what, she just turned right around and checked back into a flight to New York, right? I don't know, I I guess. Without the kid? I mean, what kind of mother would do that, right? You think she had something to do with... You know, what brought the plane down? Yeah, I think that there's a lot that we don't know. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, what do any of us know, right? Is this Anna Dragoff? Who is this? I'm sorry, you don't know me. My name is Caitlin Lay. My brother was on 702. Yes. Your sister was on the plane as well, correct? I was hoping that we could... I can't help you. you earlier today? Get out of here. I have nothing to say. Anna, please, just wait. Just wait a second. Look, I I lost my brother and you lost your sister. There's no... What the authorities are saying, it doesn't add up. All of us, we're... We're in the same boat. We all want answers and I... I think we can help each other. Just give me 15 minutes, please. Anna, Anna, listen. Bratva, he's your nephew, right? Bratva, I know where they took him. Mm. 
Where did they take him? Can I come in? We can't talk here. My parents, they get upset. There is Starbucks on 188. We meet there. Can I get you a coffee or? Where's Bratva? Address, you give to me now. ask you about your sister first. I cannot. I'm leaving. Anna. Anna. I promise. You can trust me, okay? I'm not a reporter or anything. I'm just... I'm trying to put all the pieces together. I don't believe you. Look. This is my ID. See? Caitlin Leigh. My brother is Connor Lay. He's a computer scientist, one of the best, and he, he lives with his boyfriend, Thomas, and a cat named Tova. We used to sneak out just so we could drive around and listen to Willie Nelson. He'd stay up late to teach me how to program in JavaScript, and he's my favorite person in the entire world, and I want him back more than anything. I'm sorry for your brother. Thanks. Where are you from? Kansas. That's a long way. I'm a student here. Actually, well, just outside of the city. You said you had information about my nephew. I do. Okay, the thing is, I've been doing some research and the FAA's official explanation, the bird strike, it just doesn't make sense. First of all, there's no physical evidence that the plane even crashed. There's no wreckage from the flight, no black box. The final transmissions, they all seemed normal. Spaceship. What? Spaceship came and took them away. That's not what Or I... it was Russians, or North Korea, or Lost World of Atlantis, or, or... Oh, I don't care. Tell me about my nephew. Okay. At the moment, the case is still in the hands of the British Social Services, and I imagine... They let you know that already? Being next of kin and everything? Yes, but we only get official letters. They want us to provide so much information, and my husband is away, so it's difficult for me. Where's your husband? Away. Away where? Business. What does he do? He does. Business. What kind of business? You ask too many questions, and you still haven't told okay. me. Bratva's, he's been taken to a home in Oxfordshire, about 90 minutes northwest of London. The court has appointed an official guardian. I know all of this. But yes, but I've got the address. You give it to me. I was like his mother. He stayed with us. Maria was never there. I was with him all the time. If he woke up crying in the night, it was me. Where was Maria? Parties, rich man, I don't know. And then she came one day and just took him away. Look, Maria got a call as her plane was landing in London. So? Do you have any idea who it was? Why would I? I spoke to one of the passengers sitting near her. Maria was upset by that call. I mean, it sounded serious. I don't know. Why would a mother leave her son at the airport and get on a plane unless there was... Unless she was going to blow a plane up. No, I'm not saying that. I just... But maybe she knew something was going to happen, and so she... Look, you tell me nothing. I tell you nothing. I have to go. No! Listen. I have the address. The house where they're keeping Bob. I have it. So give it to me. I don't have it with me. Oh, this is fucking joke. Goodbye. Anna, please. Please. I need you. We need each other. I mean, come on, I'm just... I'm trying to put all of this together and find the facts. No one's telling us anything. But if we help each other, we can figure out... Figure what? 
Listen, in Kansas you have tornadoes, yes? You have big wind and storm, it comes down from sky and smack. Your house, gone. Your whole life, ruined. What is the reason? I... It's... Exactly. You don't know. And you will never know. It just happens. No reason. Just like plane. Plane is gone. My sister gone. Your brother. What is the reason? I go on Facebook. I join support group. Everybody wants to say they know secret. They know what happened. But they don't. No one does. No one will ever know. You love your brother? Yes. Yeah. You remember that. Forget the rest. I go now. Chào mẹ, mẹ làm cái gì vậy? Con mua vé máy bay chưa? I can't make it. Caitlin, it's your brother's funeral. This isn't option. I've got classes, and if I miss them, then... Connor would have come if it had been your funeral. You have no idea what Connor would have done. I know you think Connor could never do anything wrong, but that doesn't mean that... Connor's not even going to be there. Just because some official issued a death certificate doesn't actually mean that he's... We waited six months for this, Caitlin, to finally be able to say goodbye. You and Dad could do what you want. We can't bury Connor until we have answers. We do have answers, Caitlin. If you don't come, what will people say? You are now our only child. Don't put that all on me. This, this... Thing destroy your brother's life. It can't destroy yours too. Go for die, go at night, they gone. No, man. Gone they to bow, gone they gone. You must You mind if I vape? Uh, not at all. I mean, some people do, you know, even though. It's fine. Do you mind if I record? Um, you're a journalist after all. I mean, you know how important it is to kind of keep uh, a record. Yeah, yeah, sure. Why not? Great. Um, so this piece you're writing about, what's his name again? Demo Dragoff. That's really his name? Sometimes supervillains actually do have supervillain names. <laughs> And you think he has something to do with Flight 702? Well, look, none of this has been proven beyond all doubt, but do you know what Dragov does? Business, according to his wife. Trafficking. Young women, mostly, from Bulgaria. He brings them over on tourist visas with the promise of work or marriage. And then when they get here, they just disappear. Uh, wait, they, they, they get drugged, forced into prostitution, then passed around his network of business associates. D.C. mainly. Jesus. Yeah. But I'm gonna nail him. I'm pretty close now. I've got quotes from his top lieutenants and women who've told me he's interviewed them for jobs as quote-unquote personal secretaries. Just a few more pieces of the puzzle and I will yeah, have I, this. Like, I hope you get him. I, I really do, but... What does this have to do with 702? Dragoff's wife, Anna, the one you met at the Starbucks. I've been hounding her for months, but she won't talk to anyone except apparently to you. Oh, well, <laughs> I guess it's because I kind of blackmailed her. I told her I knew where her nephew is. Wow, wish I'd thought of that. Did she tell you where her husband was? Away, on business. He's disappeared, most likely to Europe. He's probably in Bulgaria now, spreading his own particular brand of misery there. Okay, I'm still not seeing the connection between him and 702. No? How do you think I found out about this whole Bulgarian sex trafficking operation in the first place? 
beats me. I mean, how does anyone find out about something like that? You don't. Unless you're a customer. Or unless someone rats them out. Maria. You're a sharp cookie. God, this... This all just got really... Gnarly? That's how you know you're onto something. So, you think Dragoff had something to do with the plane going down? That, I don't know. But you said Maria was scared before she got on 702, and she left her kid behind. I mean, that doesn't sound like someone who feels completely safe to me. My theory? Dragoff found out Maria betrayed the family and sent someone after her to take care of it in the way these people take care of snitches. I leave you to speculate what that has to do with the flight. Well, um, thanks for the info. How'd you find me anyway? A mutual friend. We have one of those? Well, friend is a strong word. How do you think you're getting your contacts? I don't know what you mean. Like, who gave you the sister's phone number and address? These crime families take their privacy very seriously. I got an email pointing me in the right direction. So who gave you the tip? Honestly, uh, I don't know. I've got an email set up for anonymous tips, and it was, well, anonymous. You've got someone on the inside helping you out. On the inside? Someone with access to stuff. Who? He calls himself Dylan. I don't know a Dylan. Well, I can guarantee that's not his real name. <laughs> he left this at the front desk of my employer this morning. For you. That's why I contacted you. What is it? See for yourself. I wasn't sure if I was allowed to look, but I am damn curious. That's... That's Maria and Bratva getting off the plane in London. It, it looks like it's from a security camera. But who would have access to that? Like I said, Dylan seems to have access to things. So, walking through the terminal. Now she's kneeling down beside him. Mm. Kissing him. Now she's alone. Now she's talking to... Oh, oh, oh my god. That's Demo Dragov. You have with you? I know about Demo's business. I don't know what you're talking about. I met with Valerie Venix from New York Magazine. She told me some interesting stories. So what? Where's your husband? It's none of your business. He was on flight 702 with Maria, wasn't he? He was waiting for Maria in London so he could take her right back to New York. I don't know what you talk about. Sure you do. I got a hand on Maria's phone records and you know who called her just as she landed? It was you. Why? Was it to warn her? What exactly was Dima's plan for Maria when he got her back to New York? Was he going to punish her for betraying him? You seem to have all the information. Why don't you tell me? Maria didn't abandon her son. She was trying to escape with him, wasn't she? To give him a better life. Away from Demo, away from all of this, and then... Listen, stupid girl. No, okay? You listen. She left Bratva in the airport terminal because she knew he would have a better chance at a good life than if he stayed with her and faced whatever... Demo was going to do to them. You have no idea what you're talking about. My husband was a good man. He took care of his family. 
My sister was a disgrace. She think everyone in America have it easy. She, she think she's judge. Look at her, betraying her own family. Don't you care about what your husband does? That he was going to hurt your own sister? You know what, I'm... I'm finished here. Give me the fucking address. I don't think that's a good idea. That's not your decision. No? But it was Maria's. You will regret this, Caitlin Lay. Yeah. That does seem possible. Hello? Hi. I'm trying to reach, uh, Dylan? Didn't you read the note? You have to download... Shit. Look, I'll call you back. Click on the link I sent Wait, but you. I really... Hello? Caitlin Lay? Yes? Hi, this is Christy from the Dean's office. Um, I'm just calling because we've noticed that you haven't attended classes for a while, and I just wanted to check everything was okay with you. Yeah, I'm fine. Y you know, Caitlin, <laughs> there's actually a waiting list for your course. If the students don't attend, I, then um, we're kind of I actually have to go, so... And would you like a counseling session? Counseling? Wh why? It, it would be a, an opportunity to talk through... You know, look, Caitlin, we, we can only imagine what you have been going through, and we don't want to put you look, under I, any pressure. I'm sorry, I'm really going to have to get off the phone right now. There's I... also the question of your tuition fees. I, I'm, I've got to go. Dylan? Don't call me again unless it's through the app. It's only safe if we both right. use it. Right, um... So what do you want? I just wanted to thank you for the photos and the phone records and... There's no need. I hope you find the answers you're looking for. Thanks. Is that it? What? Was there anything else? Who are you? <laughs> Why are you helping me? I'm just... someone who wants to find out what really happened. I saw your post on the Facebook group and I wanted to help. Right. Did you... Have someone on Flight 702? Look, you don't believe the bird strike theory, right? Well, neither do I. Okay. So, how did you get those images? No. What? No, you can't ask me that stuff. Okay, but why wasn't Dimo Dragov on the passenger list? He was traveling on a fake passport. Then wouldn't the FAA have some sort of... Lots of people travel on fake passports for lots of reasons. He's not your guy. <sighs> Well, then why would... I thought it might have something to do with him, but... I've got another lead. Wait. You're saying all of this, the trafficking, Dragov's crime empire, had nothing to do with the plane going down? That... Correct. Trust me. And you're wasting your time with Anna. How do I know that you're not part of this? A member of Dragov's crime family trying to throw me off the scent? I... Wow. Thanks for the reassurance. Listen, Caitlin, I don't have time to reassure you. You can either trust my intel or not. You have more? Yeah. The person you should really be looking into is... <laughs> Shit. I've got to go. I'll be in No, but I... Dylan? Dylan, is that, is that you? Hello? Hello? Episode 1 of Passenger List, Traffic, featuring Kelly Marie Tran and Dolia Gavonsky, was written by John Scott Dryden, with editing, sound design, and music by Mark Henry Phillips. 
Passenger List is executive produced and directed by me, Lauren Chippen, and John Scott Dryden, and is a project of Radiotopia from PRX. For more details, including a cast list, visit PassengerPod.org. Ground, Atlantic 702, Boeing 737-800, stand 110 with information kilo, 1,015 millibars, request IFR clearance to JFK. Atlantic 702, Heathrow Ground, good evening to you. Clear JFK, Woven 3G, Squawk 5879. Clear JFK, Woven 3G departure, Squawk 5879, Atlantic 702. Atlantic 702, read back, correct? Roger that. <laughs> Not a bad evening, right? I'm the heat. Hi. Where's Jackson? Is he the usual copy? Yeah. Yeah, they called me to stand in. I think they try to call you. Everything okay? I suppose it'll need to be. We're already running tight. Sorry about that. I got here as soon as I could. You want to run through the list? Yeah. Here. I already got started. You started the list without me? Do you want us to be later than we already are? Okay. Parking brake? Set. Throttle? Idle. Fuel flow? Cut off. Flaps? Flaps up. Spoiler. Did they say what was wrong? With Jackson? Uh, said he called in sick. Maybe he got the flu that's going around. I'm Zahid, by the way. Oh. Helen McPherson. Nice to meet you. He's got the manifest for you, Captain. Oh, thank you, Linda. How are we doing back there? All set. The sick lady's off the plane. The bag's off, too? Yes. Ground personnel cleared. Everybody buckled up? Yes. Lovely. Then let's arm the doors and cross-check. Yes, Captain. The list? What's that? We haven't finished. I know that. What's left? Spoiler. Retracted. Fuel quantity? Pull up. Heading indicator. Set. Radios and avionics. Set for departure. All good? Yes, Captain. <laughs> oh, so you're a funny one. Shall we comfort our sheep? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain speaking. Our apologies for that slight delay. We had a sick passenger to escort off board, and we were waiting for my hilarious co-pilot to arrive, but we're all settled now and cleared for takeoff. Just so you know, I am hilarious. <laughs> oh, I have no doubt. Hey, can I try your headset? Mine's a little fuzzy. It's not working. No, it's working. It's just fuzzy. Just give me yours. Here you go. Heathrow ground, Atlantic 702, ready to taxi. Atlantic 702, you can go ahead and taxi to Delta 29. Should be a company 737, you can line up behind. Roger that, ground. I love night flights. Yeah? Yeah. Flying west especially. When you land, it's still night, and you get to sleep in your own bed. Well, that sounds bleak. What, you're the only one who can make jokes? <laughs> you're dry. I like that. So where are you from? Jersey. Any kids? Four-year-old boy and a seven-year-old girl. What about you? Nope. I did the husband thing. No. Didn't work for me. I'm not so sure it's working for my wife, either. <laughs> Excellent. Sounds like we got something to talk about for eight hours. We'll see if we make it that long. 702, clear for takeoff. Roger that. 
Cabin crew, prepare for takeoff. What about you? Got anyone waiting for you back home? No one. A plane has crashed. Atlantic Flight 702 from London Heathrow was expected in New York. Flight 702. Its radar contact with the plane was lost. In Our prayers go to the relatives of the passengers on board 256 in number. Atlantic Airlines has today confirmed reports that the co-pilot of missing flight 702, Zahid Najem, was a last-minute replacement. Every time something like this escape. happens, the first question anyone asks is, were there any Muslims on board? Who were they? Why were but they there? there? Is a reason why we no, ask these no, questions. No, we are not the terrorists, and yet you insist on implying... I, I, I keep thinking uh, what would have happened if I hadn't been sick. Would things have turned out different? I guess we'll never know. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, that's all I have to say. If you need a book hangover cure and some laughs, Fantasy Fangirls podcast is just for you. I'm Lexi. And I'm Nicole. And we're two sisters who dive deep into your favorite fantasy books one series at a time. Talking about lore, characters, insights, and oh so many theories of stories like A Court of Thorns and Roses and Fourth Wing. Fantasy Fangirls is like your personal book club where we analyze and gush over these book series. Join over 100,000 in the community by searching Fantasy Fangirls wherever you get your podcasts or check us out on YouTube. So, uh, what do you do here? Well, we have to test anything the planes could come into contact with when they're up in the air. So it's mostly water and ice, like a lot. But how much? Five tons of water per minute, almost two tons of ice per minute. More than they experience when they're flying, just to be safe. It's insane. And you do birds too? Yeah, we shoot them in there, frozen, whole, to make sure the engines can handle it. Otherwise, you'd have planes going down, left and right. And you can actually show me this. Caitlin, I'm just glad a young engineer like you is interested. Here, fire it up, boys. Twenty pound birds like a gnat for a jet engine. Okay, but bird strikes do bring down planes sometimes, right? I mean, isn't that why uh, Atlantic 702 crashed? I mean, yeah, it's possible. <laughs> you don't think there was a bird strike? I mean, it could have been a bird strike, but look, it doesn't mean the birds are what brought down the plane. I mean, you just saw what these engines can take. When bird strikes result in a crash, it's usually the pilot freak out that brings it down. They hear the sound, they feel the plane lurch, and they overcorrect. Okay, so it was the pilot, then why blame the birds? Well, definitely wasn't just birds. My personal opinion is they didn't want to blame the pilot because she was a woman. Not good for PR, you know? Uh, I guess. Oh, hey, I'm not saying women are any worse as pilots than men. No, I, I know. Just like I don't think women are any better or worse than men as engineers. Hey, Frank, it's, it's fine. It's just, I don't want to, like, discourage you from engineering, because, you know what? This job is pretty great. Yeah, I, I get it. So, with 702... Maybe the geese hit and the pilot panicked and uh, then... She could have hit the damaged engine with too much thrust or over applied the rudder or tried to climb altitude to give herself time to test the engines or decrease the speed, lost airflow. Any of that can cause a stall and then there's more panic. Now, if, if she was still running one engine and things were too asymmetrical, the plane could have spun out. There's a lot that could go wrong. Most crashes, at least three quarters of them, it's pilot error, or co-pilot error. Uh, what's co-pilot error? 
when the co-pilot doesn't tell the pilot that they're doing something stupid. See, that's why you see more crashes in Asia than you do in the West. Co-pilots there don't like to challenge the pilot's authority. It's a cultural thing. A uh, cultural thing. <laughs> well, not like that. There, there were some articles a few years ago. Right. Uh, so you think Zahid Najem wouldn't challenge Helic McPherson because he was Asian? Atlantic 702 was a 737 that was only four years old. I have tested that exact engine hundreds of times. It would take a whole lot of turkeys to bring that bird down. Dozens, all at once, with the worst luck in the universe. So yeah, if you're asking me, it was the people in the cockpit. Okay, well, if that's true, then the question's whether it was an accident or not. Yep. But that question's way over my pay grade. Miss Najem? How can I help you? Uh, my name's Caitlin Lay. Um, I don't really know how to. I'm sorry, could you could you come outside? Are you here about Zaid? Yeah, I am. Please tell me you're not a fucking reporter, because I thought we were done with all that. Mom, you said Go to your room, both of you. It's one of Daddy's friends. Just give mommy a minute, okay? Mom, let's go upstairs. I'm so sorry, Miss Najem, but I'm not a reporter. My brother was on 702. Oh. I'm sorry for your loss, but what are you doing here? How do you know where I live? I know. I'm sorry, it's just... It's been really hard for me to move on, because I feel like there's still so much we don't know. I understand. You do? I'm a therapist. But even for me, this has been... It's not easy for anyone to process when they haven't found the plane or the bodies. Exactly. And I can't help but feel like we still don't know what happened. You don't think it was birds in the engine? To be honest, I don't. What you're doing isn't healthy. You know that, right? How old are you, Caitlin? 21. Why aren't you in school? Well, I am. Kind of. Technically, I am. I don't think you're in school. Zahid was Muslim, right? Excuse me? I just have a few questions about the nature of how he was Muslim. You're lucky you're a kid. Otherwise, I don't know what I'd be doing right now. I'm sorry, I, I know this must be hard to talk about. Must be hard to talk about? Are you doing this to all the other families? Making accusations about their husbands being terrorists? Do you want me to give you DNA evidence that Zahid wasn't an extremist? Do you want to maybe take a look through the house? No. Because I think there might be a few boxes in the attic that the FBI didn't look through. I didn't come here to upset you. Really? I went through all this with the investigators and the reporters and every asshole who tweeted at me and invaded my email account. Look, I had to deal with the FBI too, so I understand what you're going through, because that's what I'm going through. It's just, for me, I feel like I should be asking questions. There are things that I didn't know about my brother, things that I... Are you going to tell me that you never wondered? 
You never wondered if maybe there was something about him that you didn't know. I'm a wife. You wonder what you don't know about your husband all the time. Well, then that's what I'm here about. Those dark spots. He had been spending more time at the mosque before the plane went down, but not because he was radicalizing. It's because we were separated. Because I found out he'd been sticking his dick in a British hooker during his overnights in London. Now, does that sound like someone who's very devout to you? I'm sorry, but people... People can be hypocrites. You know, they say they believe in one thing, and then the way they act says something else. He begged me over and over to forgive him. He said, if I didn't, then he could never forgive himself. The worst part of it is I was going to let him come home after a few more weeks. I just wanted him to stew in it a little bit longer, you know? And I didn't want him around to see me crying and crying. And now he's just gone. I'm sorry. I need to go and check on our kids. How can I help you? Uh, I'm looking for uh, Yusuf Kassab. I am Imam Kassab. Why don't we step outside? Is there something wrong? Generally, women don't enter this part of the mosque. Please excuse my friends. You're excused. <laughs> this way. to offend you. I'm very interested to hear what comes next. But why don't we start with your name? I'm Abby. Abby Connors. It's lovely to meet you, Abby. Is this your first time to a mosque? No. Actually, it's not. Well, you didn't mention who you work for. I am freelance. New York Times, Washington Post, Time, you know. I see. Uh, you've done well for someone so young. I, I know that you previously spoke to the authorities about Zahid Najem. I see. Please don't walk away. I'm sorry, I just, I have... I'm a, not moving, Abby. I have nothing to hide. Because Zahid was absolutely not an extremist. You can ask me whatever you like. I spoke to Zahid's wife. She said the reason Zahid was spending more time here is that they were separated, but I don't know if that's true. We often don't know what's true between husbands and wives. So do you think it's true? As a matter of fact, I know it's true to the best of my ability, because Zahid spoke endlessly to me about his guilt over his family. But I think it's wise of you to be suspicious, because in my experience, spouses usually keep secrets from each other. Do you think Zahid could have felt so guilty that... that he would want to take down a plane? No, I don't. How can you be sure? Why don't you trust the authorities to do their job? Because they haven't given us enough information. You mean they haven't told the public the details of Zahid's marriage? That he sinned as all of us do and that he happened to attend this particular mosque? I'm just trying to get answers. I ask you this without judgment. 
Why do you believe that you are better suited to getting these answers than the government? I don't. I might be the only one who's still asking. Is it possible that Zahid started attending a mosque in London and did they maybe have a more radical interpretation of Islam than the one you teach? I would say that if the authorities did not explore that option, then they would be very bad at their jobs. And I would be willing to bet that no passenger received as much scrutiny from the investigators as Zahid, due to his being a Muslim in the cockpit of a plane that crashed. We don't know that it crashed, and you didn't really answer my question. I did, but you have a very specific frame, and you are looking for my answers to fill. I don't understand what that means. No. To my knowledge, Zahid was not attending a mosque in London. Please, Caitlin, if there are any other questions, I would be glad to answer them, but how I... Do you, how do you know my name? Don't look so scared. Donna called me. She told me you might be coming by. The next time you're doing this, I might recommend that you not let on that you've spoken to someone I might know. Have you considered that this tragedy may not be the product of undetected malice, Caitlin? Have you considered that maybe it really was just an accident? Of course I have. But that doesn't work for you. Look, you may be at peace with how little we know, but you didn't lose someone. You don't know what this feels like. I think you'll find that I did lose someone, Caitlin. Zahid was a part of my congregation. Right, right. Of course. You did everything that you could. No, you don't have to deal with this... this guilt. Guilt? Caitlin, you are not responsible. Surely you must understand that. I'm responsible for what I do now. You look scared, Caitlin. Can I call someone for you? I'm not scared. No. I'm fine. I... I will be okay. Inshallah. Caitlin. It wasn't birds. Even if they hit the birds, that isn't why the plane went down. You really shouldn't call me unless it's an emergency. I thought you said this app was safe. We couldn't be traced. That's when I initiate. Your phone could be traced if you call me on an unprotected network. We're fine, okay? What's going on? I don't think it was Najem. He would have been the number one suspect, and if this was a cover-up, they would have scapegoated him in a second. Hmm. What do we know about this pilot, Helen McPherson? We don't know anything. We... Oh, not a team. Oh, uh, thanks, mate. Where are you? Getting coffee. Oh, right. What? Nothing, it's just... I guess I sort of forget you're a real person. Not just a weird voice on a phone. It's probably best if you keep on thinking of me that way, though. As a disembodied voice. Yeah, you're right. She was Air Force, single, didn't have much for life. I've done a little poking around. So, what? You think she brought the pain down? You swear you didn't tell him when you were talking to me? Mr. Jackson, I swear you've got nothing to worry about. Because yeah, Atlantic made me sign a bunch of papers. And they, if they ever found out I, I talked to the press or anyone else about the crash, they, they, they can ruin me. And why agree to talk? Because I'm a human being. And sometimes you need to talk about the thing that almost killed you. I can't believe they signed those papers. They, they gave me money. Don't. Let them make you feel like you did something wrong. Why couldn't you fly on 702? Well, I woke up in the hotel in London and I could barely move. 
My throat felt like sandpaper, had a fever. It was either a really bad cold or maybe the flu. So I called in sick. Lucky call. No one's ever not two touches is lucky. Now I got my own stuff going on in my head. What do you mean? I wonder about Helen. I think about it a lot, what it must have been like for her at the end. We flew that route together for a long time. Has the um, airline gotten you help? I don't work for them anymore. I quit a month after the accident. Because of your mental health? Well, my mental health is fine. It's normal to be a bit screwed up after something like this. I can still do my job. I'm, I'm probably better at it now. So, why'd you leave? I didn't like the way the management handled things. After the accident? What do you mean? Before the accident. More coffee? Uh, yeah, sure, thanks. Guys, anything else? Henry, do you think they could have stopped it? I, I don't want to speak bad about her. Helen's a good pilot. Was. You're not speaking badly about her. I did speak badly about her, though. I told management she wasn't doing the checklist. I, I told them she had this dark edge. As in, like, depressed, dark? I, I don't know. She was cold. She snapped a lot. And I think she was really lonely. And she was a great pilot, but she was just too... used to being in charge, I guess. She took shortcuts. And you told the airline this? A few times, yeah. They never did anything about it. But lots of pilots don't take the checklist seriously. Okay, well, what's the kind of thing you can miss if you don't do the list? Oh, oh God, I mean, how much time do you have? Uh, the the, the pre-flight checklist has like 30 different things to check, and 12 of them could bring down a plane on their own if they failed. But it, it wasn't just the list. She was, she just, Helen was very comfortable in that cockpit, kind of, too comfortable, and she was more interested in talking. About what? Anything and everything. But mostly, she wanted to talk about our lives. My life, who I was, you know, who I was, you know, dating, all of it. Pilots and co-pilots, they get to know each other insanely well. I mean, imagine having eight hours to talk with someone four times a week. It's a weird thing. For some people, it can become its own relationship. At least, I know it was for her. She didn't really have anyone else in her life, at least since her husband left a few years back. Did Helen seem okay to you, like, mentally? Well, I don't think she'd ever hurt anyone. But a couple of times, she made a joke about depressurizing the cabin. What does that do? It knocks everyone unconscious. That's how the pilot on Malaysia 370 brought the plane down. Helen, Helen would say, what if we put the sheep to sleep? We could have the sky to ourselves. Oh my God. But, but I, I think she was joking. I'm, I'm pretty sure she was joking. But if she skipped one of those steps on the pre-flight list and the oil pressure was off or the de-icers weren't working. So the, the airline said it was birds. But really, it could have been... It could have been a million things. There's a million ways to die. Look, I tried to warn them. I did. Nice to see you, Caitlin. How have you been? I've been holding up. I'm really, really happy to hear that. We missed you at the survivors meeting. Oh, can I get you something to drink? I've already been offered bottled water by eight different people. 
Like, Jennifer, I wanted to talk because I have questions. I mean, I still have questions. Of course you do. I totally understand. I have questions about the pilot and the co-pilot. I hear you. That makes total sense, Caitlin. I would too, but Atlantic Airlines has to be really careful because we have to follow legal guidelines for privacy, and those guidelines include- No, Jennifer, I, I know you're just doing your job, but I know that Henry Jackson filed complaints with the airline about Helen McPherson. Complaints that went unanswered. And then the plane crashed. So should I try talking to a reporter, or do you maybe want to just tell me a little bit about the pilot and the co-pilot? And- one sec, I just need to, um... Like, you don't need to do that. You don't need to email your superiors, okay? I'm not going to cause a problem for you if you just treat me like you'd want to be treated. You just threatened me, Caitlin. I didn't threaten you, Jennifer. I told you I'm going to talk to a reporter about Atlantic Airlines making a big fucking fuck up. That wasn't your fault, so I'm not threatening you, but I know you know about the investigation, so if you can just tell me what's you, going you, you on. You spoke to Henry Jackson. He told you he made a safety complaint about Helen McPherson? Yes. <sighs> These incidents, when something terrible happens with a plane, they don't just affect the families of the deceased. The impact can ripple throughout all kinds of people, especially people who work for the airlines, and people who work in cockpits most of all, I imagine. Henry, unfortunately, I think Henry may have been a survivor in his own way. I don't think he invented that complaint, Jennifer. He said he made it before the flight. He said he complained a few times. He told you that he was sick? He said that's why he couldn't fly the day of the accident. Yeah, he did. Huh. I'm only telling you this because... <laughs> I would have questions, too. And I'm kind of impressed that you won't stop asking them. Henry Jackson found out a formal complaint had been made against him by someone. But the, the pilot made a complaint about him? I can't answer that question, but the relationship between pilots and co-pilots can get very layered. But, uh, are you saying Jackson and McPherson had a relationship? No, I'm saying... They flew together for three years, and I don't really know what it was like between them. Okay, but whatever it was ended up with each of them making complaints about the other. Those are your conclusions. So you think they had a relationship, and it went bad, and maybe... I don't know what happened. And now we'll never know. And we'll never know if she was skipping her checklists. Helen McPherson was a pro. Like all our former Air Force pilots, they don't crack. I know it's not satisfying to hear that it was a bird strike, Caitlin, but that's what it was. No pilot would have been able to save a plane in the one in a million chance that both engines blew over the Atlantic. Okay, birds can't blow both engines. It's happened before, Caitlin. Not over the Atlantic, flying at 30,000 feet. <clears throat> Barnacle geese migrate over the flight path at that altitude, Caitlin. The scientists wrote that report, not us. Then why didn't they radio for help? Because Helen would have spent every last second trying to keep them up in the air. Right. You don't need to go. We can talk as long as you like. I, I have to go to class. I, I really would love to see you at the next survivors meeting. Because, Caitlin, everyone has these questions. And there aren't answers for a lot of them, but sometimes it's nice just to ask them together. Yeah. No thanks. Gander Radio, Gander Radio, Atlantic 702 on 58. Atlantic 702, Gander. How's the sky looking? Sky's beautiful, and the company's not bad either. Yeah, thank you. Glad to hear it. Atlantic 702, go ahead. Gander Radio, Atlantic 702, SoCal Papa Tango. New York next. Over. Atlantic 702, here's your SoCal. Gander Atlantic 702, SoCal OK. Atlantic 702, roger that. What's your condition report? 
We had a little run-in with some geese about 200 miles back, but I shut down the second left engine as a precaution. We seem to be nice and balanced. Atlantic 72, roger that. Thank you, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. It was eerie hearing them so soon before. The... Yeah. But it definitely didn't sound like she was suicidal. Suicidal people can still joke around. Thanks for sending it. It was weirdly comforting to listen to. How'd you even get it? Don't worry about it. Right. Dylan, why are you doing this? I care about the truth, just like you. Yeah, but I have a reason to care. You, are you involved somehow in all of this? I have access and conscience. That's all you need to know. What kind of access are we talking about here? Shit. That's the Google number I set up for tips. I... Take it, we'll talk later. Oh, wait, but... Yes. Hi, hello. This, this is Caitlin. It's actually you. I'm talking to you. You poor girl. Who's this? Flight 702. I should have told someone. I was just... They didn't look that bad. What do you mean? What are you talking about? It's my fault. It's my fault the plane went down. Episode 2 of Passenger List, Flock of Geese, featuring Kelly Marie Tran, was written by Kevin Rodriguez, with editing, sound design and music by Mark Henry Phillips. Passenger List is executive produced and directed by me, John Scott Dryden, and Lauren Shippen, and is a project of Radiotopia from PRX. For more details, including a cast list, visit passengerpod.org. This heart has gone into arrhythmia. Arrhythmia? But that would mean... Yes, old friend, we can't stop him soon. The tortoise will die.
This has been a Sonic Cinema production.